Good afternoon. We Jews believe that world events are formed and created not by the whims of people, but rather by the wisdom of the Torah. Torah is the will and the wisdom of God placed into a holy book, which is the source of life for the rest of the world, for all the worlds. And when something is found in Torah, the events that take place in the world during the week we read those words of the Torah reflect those words in one form or another. Sometimes you have to dig deeply and other times it's, a, it's apparent. This week's Torah portion focuses on the confrontation between Jacob, the archetypical servant of God, the man of righteousness, the man of the cloth, the man of wisdom, and his brother Esau, the swashbuckling hunter, killer, man of many women, And the Torah tells us that Jacob prevented his brother Esau from seeing his daughter Dina. Dina was a beautiful little girl and Jacob was afraid that Esau, being a sexual predator, would covet his daughter and ask for her hand. And he didn't want that to happen, so he held her in a box. After Esau departed, the Torah continues that Jacob was punished because as soon as she came out of the box and started looking to play with some girls, she was raped by the prince of the city, Shem the place that is now known as Nablus, but its real name is Shechem. Shechem, the son of Hamor. Hamor is a donkey. The son of donkey flesh sees a Jewish girl and rapes her and thinks it's cool and he wants to marry her. And he comes in front of the brothers and the father and says, hey, I'll pay you whatever you want. All you guys want is guilt anyway, right? And they tell him, no, it's not dependent on guilt. We don't want somebody with an uncircumcised genital. We are people of the faith and we circumcise ourselves. And the reason for the circumcision is so that we don't engage in raping women that we see. So if you want to go ahead and change your lifestyle and become one of us, you can be our guest. Otherwise, we're not interested. We're taking our sister and leaving. Lo and behold, Shem agrees to circumcising himself despite the fact that it's a scary operation for an adult. A child is scary also, but the child has no choice. And it takes a half a second to make the cut. But for a man, an older person, I've seen it happen in doctor's offices and in hospitals. In order to avoid uh, excruciating pain, you have to have complete anesthesia. When it's done locally, local anesthetic, it's possible for there to be excruciating pain. I've seen a child be circumcised without anesthesia, and I held that child's hand. And the child squeezed my hand and squeezed my hand, and the pain was excruciating. Imagine what it's like for an older person. And this is what Shem agreed to put himself through, because he coveted 
Jacob's daughter. Why did it happen that he covets a girl after he rapes her? Rape is not a crime of passion and love. It's a crime of violence and demeaning the other person. Man rapes a woman to demean her, to, to put her down. Quite often the man who rapes the woman kills her. And the um, certainly doesn't come after to come again. In this case, Shem is completely bedazzled by this girl. The girl, by the way, if you don't know it, is about six and a half years old. Now Shem is an adult. How do you rape a six and a half year old and then want her so bad that you want her as your wife and you're willing to cut off a piece of your extremity in order to let that happen. You have to understand what's going on over here. Shem was a man, when he saw something he liked, he just attacked it and took it. Shem was the ultimate predator. There was no rhyme or reason, there was no law or order. He did what he wanted. You were a girl, consider yourself lucky he didn't kill you. There was no, nobody to complain to. He was the court favorite, and whatever he wanted to do was fine with them. So how many people did he rape? How many women did he rape? 10, 20, 100, 1,000? I don't know. We never know. But that's who he was. He was a sexual predator. To go to another man's family, a stranger, and to rape their single, their only girl, their only daughter, required what they call chutzpah, gall. You know, it wasn't cojones, it was just pure gall, pure chutzpah, having no feeling or respect for somebody else. All of a sudden he wants to marry and make it kosher. What's going on? The answer is that Dina was unlike any other woman he had ever been with. Because Dina should have been a boy. The rabbis tell us her name Dina means judgment. What judgment happened was that her mother Leah, realizing that she had six boys, another four boys were born to the two uh, women servants of the household. That makes ten. This, she's pregnant now, this is a boy, then that makes eleven. It was known mystically, Kabbalistically, through, through prophecy, that Jacob would only have 12 sons. If that happens, then Rachel would only have one son. Seven, four, and one. That's it. And she would be less than any of the maidservants. So she made this judgment call and asked God, look God, if this is a boy, make her a girl. And that's what happened. Inside the womb of Leah, of Leah, the boy became a girl. And inside the womb of Rachel, the girl that was supposed to be born became a boy. And so Dina was a girl unlike any other girl. And Joseph, Yosef, was a boy unlike any other boy. And that's why Shem, who was used to women cowering in front of them, women who felt overwhelmed, could not dominate Dina. Dina never felt dominated. You got your fun? Heck with you, I don't like you. He never met a woman like that, a woman who could not be dominated, who desired a man more than the man desired her. He had never seen a woman like that. And because she could not be dominated, 
because she wasn't an ordinary woman. Her womanhood came directly from God. That's what made her something special and coveted. He couldn't get enough of her because it wasn't a woman that he dominated and just could throw out. He could never get enough of her because she always was elusive. She was always bigger than him, better than him, stronger than him. And the more he was with Dina, the more he coveted her, the more he cared about her, the more he lusted for her. And that's why Jacob was punished, because Esau, who was 97 years old at the time, and had probably had thousands, if not tens of thousands of women in his lifetime, Esau would have seen how special this girl is and would have covered her just as much as Shechem, if not more. And the rule is, the one who covets the other, that's the one in charge. So, Dina could have changed Asa. That was her purpose in life, is taking the bad boy and transforming the bad boy into a good boy. Taking the predator and making him go straight. So here we have a Parsha that talks about sexual predators and sexual predators who try to get away with things. In the case of Esau, nobody ever intervened. And the Torah says that was improper. It should have been intervened. There should have been an intervention. The method of intervention would have been a woman. With Shem, there was also an intervention. It wasn't the woman came forward. The woman captured him and he became trapped by his own sexual predatoring. This is what happens in this week's Torah portion. The sexual predator is caught and embarrassed and shamed forever. And that's why these things are happening at this particular juncture in our lives. But there is one caveat, one problem. The reason why we frown on sexual predators today has got nothing to do with values. It's got nothing to do with character. It has everything to do with PC, politically political correctness. Of course, women are more than 50% of the population and they carry the cloud of votes. Therefore, you have to be for women's rights. Therefore, you have to be against the sexual predator. If somebody's accused of being a sexual predator, he is discredited without any evidence and without any kind of discernment as to see what the level of his being a predator was. Did he rape a woman? Did he just fondle them? That doesn't excuse him. Don't get me wrong. But there's a difference between rape, consensual sexual relations, or simply inappropriate behavior. They are all lumped as one because it's PC, it's politically correct. It's the wrong way of dealing with a sexual predator. Human sexuality has to be seen in a different light and is seen in the wrong light. Human sexuality is seen as the right of individuals to enjoy their lives without any difficulty, without being encumbered by any consequence. So men want to have relations without having consequences. They want to have a girlfriend, and if the girlfriend gets pregnant, you have an abortion. They don't want to have any consequences in terms of if you take someone and is intimate with someone, you don't feel necessary to go further with that relationship. It's just a one night stand, as they say. All of that is wrong. The whole scene is wrong. 
The whole man-woman situation is wrong. Why are women seen on television exposed? Their legs are exposed and their tops are exposed. Why is it necessary for a woman to wear revealing clothing or almost no clothing? And the men on television are wearing shirts and, 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 uh, and slacks and most of the time uh, jackets. Women are seen as sexual objects. If they're sexual objects, who are they trying to attract? And if they're trying to attract people, what, why are they so upset when people give them attention? Well, it's not the person they want to attract. You know, it's, if you want to attract a specific person, then you have to know how to attract that specific person. But by going half naked, you attract everybody including those people you don't want to have attract to you. So if a person doesn't want unwanted sexual advances, don't expose yourself. Unfortunately, that's not what's going on. What's going on is women exposing themselves and upset with the fact that by exposing themselves, they get unwanted attention from unwanted kind of people. That is counterintuitive. If you want to protect your person then you have to have a line of protection that tells everybody that you're not for sale you're not open for the first customer you do things at your pace when you want it but that's only if you make a protection a protective wall around yourself not a burqa but that you don't want to show yourself off unnecessary necessarily for those people who you don't want to give you attention but that's not what's happening and the sexual predator has to learn the reason why it is a Torah a Jewish concept that being a sexual predator is wrong is because human sexuality is not for self gratification it's not for one night stand the purpose of human sexuality is so that people have children by being attracted to a woman a man will eventually have relations and will be able to have a child as well as a woman the reason why men are attracted to women and women are attracted to men is for that purpose only in the main of course people who are older or people who can't have children stay together because they love each other as people but the first attraction that god has put into this world is so that you want to have children with that particular person the reason why a sexual predator has to be criticized is because the person has perverted the purpose of life and the purpose of procreation the purpose of having sex to begin with instead the reason why these people are punished is because it's not PC because women their rights have to be protected because women have to have a, are a special minority it's stupid it's not what has to happen women's rights have to be protected because women must be protected first and foremost a woman must protect herself by not being exposed by not advertising stuff that isn't necessary for everybody to see and men have to understand that a woman is there not for your satisfaction a woman is there because God made that woman to be a mate of a man the purpose of being with a woman is not to have a good time but to develop a long-term relationship that you can be together and support each other and grow together and have a family together that whole process has been lost in this whole discussion whether Matt Lauer deserved to be thrown away or some of the other guys who were caught with their pants down or John Conyers or 
Senator Frankenstein, or Franken. The reason why they have to be either disbarred or, or severely punished has nothing to do with just, you know, being a predator. It's because they demean the whole male-female relationship. They make the woman into a commodity that's there for the taking when they want it because they're too big and too powerful to be criticized until now because now it's popular to, pr to promote women's issues. But until now, it was considered cute to be the naughty boy. It was considered cute to be a Bill Clinton. And people would roll their eyes but would look the other way. But the truth is, there's a whole part of life that, whose values have been thrown away, undermined, destroyed by Madison Avenue, by Hollywood, by the newspapers and the media. And then, when somebody sheds light on this, they are all horrified. Why should they be horrified? You've been commercializing the woman's body for the last 100, 150 years as much as you can. Pornography is an industry that's secreted, but it's there. It's an industry. Las Vegas is built upon that. Don't be shocked at Matt Lauer. Don't be shocked at Al Franken. Be shocked at yourself. Be shocked at the values that you've absorbed over the last 50, 40, 50, 60, 70 years bombarded by the TV, reinforced by the media and by the socialist professors that you had in college. The body was created by God. Human sexuality has a purpose, a wonderful purpose. A purpose of bonding, a purpose of unity, a purpose of creation. The reason why Matt Lauer should be criticized and the rest of the group should be criticized has got nothing to do with the protection of women. It has everything to do with human dignity, with the, the values that sexuality should be done for one purpose only, for marriage.